This 300 TDI has got a kind of a nasty oil leak on that side of the engine, so we're going to have a look for it. Um, I've already ordered a, what, what the parts that I need, but I just thought I'd show you what I found out. Now again, this engine's um, a 300 TDI that's bolted to a LT77, that's why it's further back, and it's not my, you know, I, I don't really like them like that. I'd rather have the proper gearbox in, but who oh, okay. cares. So what we're doing is we're looking around this engine and you can see quite clearly where the oil's coming out of. Uh, not the oil. Yeah, the oil. Now look, can you see there? Let's see if I can do a bit of a zoom. There's our old favourite out of the O-ring that's on the uh, breather. You can see it coming out of there. And it's bellowing out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that O-ring because that's obviously dropping down the side. But more importantly, if you look down here, um, where are you? There you go. Can you see it blowing out of the uh, vacuum pump? Maybe you can, maybe you can't. But it's coming out of the one of the rivets down at the bottom there. You probably can just to say see it. All right. So we're going to change that. We're also going to change this hose because that is rock hard, you'll never tighten that up. And we're also going to change this hose here because the hoses get hard. These are the oil breathers and returns and stuff like that. So a little bit of work, not too bad. I'm just not looking forward to trying getting this pump out. You can see how tight it is against the footwell. That's going to be a lot of fun, isn't it? So let's start off and let's have a look at this o-ring here because that's the easiest. Getting the o-ring off is quite easy. You've got to have the right o-ring. I've found that this, these are the o-rings here. They're only cheap, just like everything else. But um, we've got to get the old one off using a, a small prick, a pricker, and you can see that is not a very nice o-ring. don't know if we can get close enough to have a, a better look but I don't know if you can see that but it's I don't know if it will focus in. It's all square and it's not very nice. So what we're going to do if I can find it we'll get some brake cleaner on there and clean that up and we'll put some sealer on. Let's go and see if we can find some brake cleaner. So I just slipped the, uh, I cleaned everything off, got it all nice, and I'm just going to put a little bit of hilo sill on there to do two things, to act as a, a bit better seal, but also to give that o-ring a bit of a, a fighting chance with lubrication when it goes in, just like that. So that's good, and that's one, but that's one done. All I've got to do now is bolt it back up and away we go and then we'll test it again but I'm going to change the rest of those hoses so I hope you can see there's the part number for this hose that comes off the breather let's see if we can get out so that comes off the, um, the cyclone separator and this one here goes to the rock valve cover now I know the rubber and I know the brick part, and I know they're not very good. Well, they're better than the old ones that are hard and leaking, because these are still nice and nice and supple, and they have actually got reinforcement inside them. But they're cheap. You know, they're not very expensive. Might last about four or five years, something like that. But the thing is, if you want the braided hose from Land Rover that goes on there, uh, when I priced it up, it was £28. It was a little bit expensive for a piece of rubber hose. So anyway, let's get on and see what, how we can change those. Now I'll put my light on a bit and so we can see what we're doing. The hose clips aren't very good to get to. I'm going to have to take this off again to get to the clips. In fact, I'll tell you what, I'll take it all off. because there's a nasty little clip right down at the bottom so that we get now we can get access to that clip I 
that's that. I'll just put a bit more sealer on that when I put it back in again. And this one here, there's a clip under there. This one's, this one's not too bad to do. It would have been wise to have this power washed off before we uh, started on this, but well, we didn't do that. Let's get the clip off and put it up there. And the other clip is underneath. Now that can be a little bit tricky to get to. Now, if you see a flickering light, I have still have I still have an LED ceiling light that I have to fix. And I haven't quite got round to doing it yet. Because this has been in the way. So it looks like a disco, but uh, it's not too bad. Now. Yeah, it would have been nice if it was all nice and clean because then you can see what you're doing. Let's put this little light on down here. Ah, oh, that's better. Oh, dear me. Yeah, a, bit, a bit more. Nearly enough. why I wanted to uh, to do that and show you you can see how the hose clip started to bite into here and you can see it's not quite round it's the same at the top you know they've had the day the hose clips nipped into the pipe so and you listen the you know like they're they are really really hard so I'm going to replace that you don't need to see that and then we'll go back and have a look at the other one so I've got the smoke machine on and it's still sort of bubbling away there showing that there's a leak now I did have a look around the back and I could see smoke coming out the exhaust so what's happening is um, smoke's getting through the piston rings and round through the through the exhaust and out through the exhaust pipe at the back now I should really put a plug on like I put here on the manifold itself but uh, it's too long but <laughs> I just wanted to show you that this leak here has stopped let's wait a minute see if we can zoom in and just now there's not not any smoke coming out let's see if we can put some soapy water around and see if we've got a leak there nothing but I want to show you something else down here on the vacuum pump it's a bit difficult to see and there's not much smoke coming out of it but I wanted you to show you you can see where is the pump oh there, there it is you can see that bubbling away with some soapy water on it's a good way to test them too now a lot of people say you know take it out and put some nuts and bolts in the cover and put it back on again but it's 25 years old <laughs> They're notorious for showing problems. And I can't guarantee it's going to be, you know, good for a while. So I'm going to pull it off. Now, the, the good thing about this one, because this was a Discovery engine, it hasn't got the plate. It hasn't got the plate on the back of here where it supports the air cleaner. So I should be able to get into these bolts okay. I should be able to, but I hope I can get the pump out. That's going to be a trouble. Anyway, let's see while we go on. So I got the pump off. Actually, it wasn't as bad as I thought. It was You were able to tip it to one side and bring it out. But I just wanted to show you. You can see where it's all shiny here. Where the oil's been washing down. Um, the gasket would have leaked out when I broke it. So that's, you know, broke the seal. But like I say, you can't buy parts for these pumps, unfortunately. Um, they are a bit of a problem and a bit of a gamble too when it comes to uh, buying a pump because um, different makes, different manu manufacturers, copies, seconds you, you never know what you're going to get you might get one that's going to last for years you might get one that lasts six months very common problem with these is knocking like when that goes in and out of here it bangs away and it makes an awful rattling noise 
again, you, there's nothing you can do. I've stripped them down before. I've actually had them right in bits. Um, well, like I say, you can't get parts from them. So I'm going to pop that one back on. We'll probably do a video tomorrow and finish this off when the part comes. But at least we've got a jump on the, doing the, the seals and the pipes and stuff like that. I've just had delivery of this uh, new 300 TDI uh, vacuum pump. Just this minute come through the door, so I want to get this done and get it all boxed up and out of the way. So I thought we'd have a look and compare it to the original. Now the originals were made by a company called Wabco. Uh, I think they were from Germany or Austria. It doesn't, never ever says anything. But these apparently are made in Turkey and these were the only ones I could get at short notice. And I think, I'm not even sure what, what Land Rover would get them from now. But it looks exactly the same. Except it's got brick part on there and it's got a little star and a, uh, it was made in 2017. It's funny, a lot of people have problems with brick part ones but I, I've never really had a problem with them yet. And again, it's got a 24 month warranty on it so I suppose it's, I suppose it's a little bit of uh, well security guarantee or something. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you, uh, I did this once before in another video, is uh, how to set up the uh, the engine, how to put the engine right so these are really easy to go in but I just noticed one or two things we saw in the video where it was bubbling and leaking out of here but notice too round, round this, this car plug it's, it's broken and it's starting to weep oil out of here you can see where the oil's been washing down here this side's all sort of oily and dirty oil, but this is fresh oil look, so we can't use it. I'm, I'm, I might just open it up for you later on in another video and show you what's inside. But we cannot get these open very easy. It's very, very tricky, you know, without losing an eye. Now, one last thing when you get these, I've just realised it doesn't come with a gasket. <laughs> what a stupid thing. Why doesn't it come with a gasket? Water pumps do, but these don't. And I only have one gasket. Now, I like to replace these with two gaskets. But fortunately, the gasket that's already on the vehicle is still pretty good. So I'm going to use... I don't like doing it, but I've got no other choice. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean off the old gasket as much as I can, put some sealer on both sides of the faces, and then we're going to fit this. Now, the reason why we're fitting that is it reduces the stroke ever so slightly and it just prolongs the life of the pump because there's a piston banging up and down in here and I've got a sneaking feeling that the tolerances, once the, the pumps get a little bit warm, start to hit the end covers and that's why the rivets come loose. So the more we can uh, reduce that, the better. And to be honest, I've been doing it about three or four years now and I've never had a problem with them losing power or suction or anything like that. So let me put this engine in the right position and we'll start to fit this pump. So I've checked the engine with the smoke tester and everything seems to be okay. There's a little bit of bypass via the exhaust but I can't see any leaks. I've, I've tested it with water, tested it with smoke, I can't see any leaks so I think that's okay. The, the thing I'm testing with currently at the moment is the transfer box. Now, it's obviously the machine doesn't work but what we're going to do is we're going to do two tests at once. We're going to test if the plastic pipe has got a kink in it. Because obviously the, the little uh, manometer has gone right down to the bottom. But it could be a kink pipe that's not letting the gas through. So the air through. So what I'm going to do is just crack off the pipe on the transfer box. And you should hear it. See, there you go. Now it's bubbling away. Now I'll shut it down, I'll take off the nut, and I'll put the nut back on, should I say. So I know that that transfer case now is oil tight. The next thing I've got to check is the transmission. Same way, you see it's bubbling up and it's filled up with pressure now. It's not going anywhere, so that's good. The next thing we're going to do is test the uh, uh, transmission and then we'll box up and we're done. So that's not too bad. Uh, yeah, pretty straightforward really. Alright, so I hope you like that. That was just a bit of messing about looking for leaks and finding leaks and solving leaks. 
and um, hopefully we can take this for a drive tomorrow. Making it better? Well, we're getting there. Talk to you later. Oh, a bit preemptive there. Listen, I put that onto the uh, gearbox and listen it bubbling away. There is a serious leak somewhere. Let's go and have a look. <clears throat> well, <laughs> you can see smoke is bellowing out of that transmission. You see, the thing is, down here, there is some little holes where a bracket went on for a different transfer case. I don't know if we can see it down there. Yeah, no, I'm going to have to plug those holes up by putting some bolts and washers in. That'll solve it. Good job we checked it though. If we have a look at the old gearbox that I stripped down, you see down here, this is where the two holes go, in where it's leaking from, just here. Uh, this, is, uh, this, uh, this hasn't been drilled and tapped. Let's go and have a look at the, uh, the gearbox that we're putting in. If I try and shine the light on those two bolts, you'll probably be able to see them here. Wait a minute, can you see them there? It's very tricky there. One there, and one at the back. Pretty hard to uh, see. Not too bad to get in. So I put a steel washer on and a copper washer behind and now we'll test it again. Well, I've never had one leak here before. I took the cover off and I put two temporary bolts in here because it was uh, blowing smoke through here. But just to make it a bit more visible, I've put some uh, soapy water in the top of the gearbox just under the shifter because that's where it was coming from. It, the, uh, the smoke was coming out of a little cut in the here. Well, obviously there's nothing under there. There's not even a gasket on it. So, is there an o-ring in here? Look at that. You can see the smoke coming out of the bubbles, love. So, hmm, that's interesting. Now, the thing is, <coughs> even if there is an o-ring in there, you can't take that top cover off very easily uh, without taking apart, uh, without dropping down the gearbox. I sort of wish I'd done this before, but I didn't know. Um, I'd like it right, but again that's under pressure and that's all going to be splash fed by the gearbox, so is that going to fill up with oil? Probably. Best thing to do is check. So if there isn't an o-ring in there, I'm kind of screwed, there's nothing I can do about it. But let's go and, I'll go and check and uh, I'll see how the repair goes. So there is an o-ring in here, so I've taken this off. Now you can get these off LT77s. It's not easy, but what we what I did was I, I undid all the bolts around here. There was one that was really bad I had to cut off, but undo the bolts. And then you can, I don't know if you can see right in the corner there, I put a little wedge to lift up the seat base, and that's just enough space to get that uh, out. So we're going to go across to the bench now and strip this down and see if we can get that shaft out and change the o-ring. So with the top cover removed for the shifter, I think we'll clean all this lot up, it's all sort of dirty and greasy. It didn't have a rubber cover on it I noticed. Uh, we've got to get, quite easily now, we've got to get that um, grub screw out of there and then knock a roll pin, oh, where, are you? where have you gone? Knock a roll pin out of here which isn't sort of the easiest thing. So what I did was uh, I took off the reverse stop so we can turn that round a bit more. Whether it's going to work or not, I don't know. So let's get those two pieces out. This uh, little grub screw here can be a bugger to get out. I warmed it up gently down at the bottom because I don't want to melt this plastic bush. And that's another thing we want to look for because sometimes these plastic bushes get broken. That's okay. So now that screw's coming out. There we go, that's that out of there. Stuff everywhere. Seize done. There she goes. That was a bit warm. Now we need to get the, we need to get the pin out. Getting this little roll pin 
out of here. It's very easy to put in, but it's not so easy to get out because um, you can only push it so far. So what I did was I, I tweezed it out with a pair of pliers, you know, sort of like this and just pulled it out, but oh, it's, not a very, it's not a very good design. So uh, why I'm showing you this is just remember which way this went on. So the, the boss here goes towards the shifter. Now, with a bit of luck, if we take that out, we need to get to get that out, we need to knock out that little, there's a little plug in the end of here. Now how am I going to get that out without breaking it? Mm-hmm. Think fast, Father Ted. What are we going to use? Damn. I don't want to damage the, the housing. I'll tell you what, I'll just knock it in. <laughs> That's what I'll do. I'll just knock it in and then we'll put it in from the other side. Simple, eh? Oh. There's our o-ring look. Can you see him? Flat, there's a pancake. And there's only one o-ring on the shaft. So let's find out if we've got one. I don't think we've got an actual um, numbered Land Rover part one. But we have a box of o-rings um, that we're going to have a look at. These shafts are very nice. I'm going to grease them up quite well when I put them back in. So I found a little o-ring in my set and I put it in the shaft, uh, washed all this loft off, cleaned it off, put the o-ring uh, pricky tool straight through my finger, which is nice. I'm going to give this a, a grease up. Put some grease on these shafts, just in case. Now, we'll put some in this bearing housing here, this bushing. Now, a couple of things. Oops, there we go. A couple of things to remember when you're putting all this together. This little grub screw in here goes flush. If it's sticking up, it's not going into the indentation in the shaft. So just watch out for that. See, this is that's nice now. You can feel that bit of movement on the o-ring, so that's not going to be a problem. Um, Putting the pin in, pretty self-explanatory. Make sure that boss is towards this end. I've tapped that cover back in to there, so that should be all right. I'm gonna clean the gasket off and find another gasket. But first of all, seeing we're here, we might as well have a look in this and clean this bad boy up. So I'm gonna wash it off. I seem to have a lot going on on my bench today. I'm doing about five or six things at once. Right, to get into this, it's quite easy. We take the uh, spring off the stops, move them just to one side. Maybe plies like this aren't the best of ideas, but that's all we've got. That's all we've got at hand anyway. Get them off. Take this little bolt out of here. This, this is the thing that holds the ball in, so the, the, the shifter in. Don't be tempted, if you're moving gearboxes, to lift it by the, the shaft, if you see what I mean. You know, you can put a strap around here, because the only thing that's holding it in is this, this, little, uh, this little bolt here, and it's not really enough. We might as well clean this up and grease it. It's full of grit and dirt. There we go. Now, at the, the rear, there's this little spring plunger to keep the tension. Don't lose it, all right? So, there's no O-rings or anything like that in. So what we're gonna go, take it across to the parts washer, wash it, and then we'll grease it up. So, all nicely cleaned up. 
grease up the bowl. It doesn't matter which way around this goes, it's the same. Oh no it does, because you've got to put this little plunger in the back. So the little plunger goes in the towards the uh, the bolt. I was just going to say it's the same, but it isn't. What do I know? Anyway, poke that in. There we go. Bit more grease on. There we go. And now we can put the bolt back in. Now this has got a very special washer on it. I don't know if you can focus in on that. It's got like two round, two rounded sides to it, so you can't put it on upside down. But you can't just put any old flat washer on it. Now looking around for a piece of tube, tube to put the springs on. Gonna make life a lot easier. Let's see what we've got to put the spring back on. I just got a what's that five millimeter socket. Pull that out a bit. Go down. Bring it up. Bring it up. Onto there. Now don't fasten it down completely yet because you can't get your socket out. And that's it. Oh, a lot of people fit those uh, slick shifts now. I don't know if they're. Uh, I don't know if they're any good. I've seen one, but I never actually drove one. Anyway, so that's done. So all we've got to do now is get some gaskets uh, and put it back together again. Because this has been in the vise, we're just going to run a file across the uh, the bottom faces, you know, just to finish them off because they might have got nicked a bit. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. But I'll first of all, look, let's look for some gaskets. So found a gasket for this bit anyway. Just gonna. Just go across the top. Because this is a paper gasket. This is a paper gasket, so we want the faces to be almost right. It is a Land Rover after all, so it has to be almost right. It won't be completely right. Oh, that looks nice in there. That's alright. Now, what we're going to do. is fill this full of grease and the reason for that is also it will protect everything so we'll also put some grease on the gasket to soften it up and it will make it a nice seal there's no oil or oil pressure in here I don't know why they've got a gasket on it in days gone by I used to drill a hole in the bottom to let the water out but I don't know this one's going to get that deep in water. Now, which way does that go? Like that. Work this off. Get that bit of grease there. All nicely into there. Spring to the back. Line it up. And then, I'll put the bolts in. Well, that's kind of easy, isn't it? When you're lining these gaskets up, they've got no dowels in or anything like that, so it does make it a bit tricky. Not impossible, just a bit tricky. So don't tighten the bolts down all at once, you know, like don't put them all individually in and then tighten them down individually, that's what I'm trying to say. Just fasten them down, let's wind them down a bit. Boring, eh? Fancy doing this all day. Somebody has to do it. <laughs> oh, 
Now these don't these are only in aluminium, like I said, there's no pressure, there's no oil. The oil's on the other side. The oil's on the other side of this, the, the because the o-ring is in here, as you saw. Now we're not going to set the bias on these springs here. Generally speaking, if you haven't touched this, leave it well alone. It's usually set pretty good. You know what I mean? Right, we'll just give them a nip down. Diagonally opposite. I always try to do bolts diagonally opposite. Try not to lose your ratchet. My hands are all covered in grease. <laughs> That's always a problem when you work on cars. You want to try and keep things clean, but you got you need to put grease on, and then it's everything's all sort of slippy. There we go. There we go. Let's check them again. Right. So that that bit done. The next thing I'm going to find, I've spied on another gearbox over on the other side of the shop, one of those gators, so we're going to put that on. Yeah, this is the gator I was talking about. It's quite important because otherwise you get water splashes and all sorts of stuff. That's why it all got gunged up in here. Not the easiest thing to fit. But, uh, a bit, bit tight. Pull it down, and that's it. And so when when your gear shifts on, uh, that will fit round that shaft there, and that's done. So all we've got to do now is find the rest of the gaskets, bolt this on, and we'll test it. Before we test it, this is the reverse plunger. We're going to make sure this isn't seized up. Oh, I think it was seized up. So good job we uh, looked at all these things, eh? So now we're going to take the reverse plunger to bits. That's something I didn't really want to do, but never mind, it looks like we're doing it now. Now! Oh yeah, that's well stuck, isn't it? <laughs> so what we're going to do... Oh, it's moving now. Isn't that always the case? Uh, got to find a spanner for that. It's a 24mm, I've already cracked it off but it's a bugger to hold in the vise. So I've just cracked the, the nut off because I don't really want to adjust, uh, change the adjustment too much. We'll take the plunger out. I never thought we'd be doing this on a car. But this is what you get when you get second hand gearboxes. Spring, a sprung. And down here should be a ball. Ball. This is quite why it's quite important to put that rubber gator on the top. Now this piston should come out because there's no other way for it to come out. Let's see. Ah, there you go. You can see the water that's got into that. There you see. See how it's all wet. There's a spring inside. So what we're going to do, we're going to put it through the parts washer, clean it all up, grease it, and we'll put it back together again. So we'll take the little ball, clean the ball up, drop it in, push it in down there, and then we're going to put the cover back on. The idea is that the spring offers resistance to this, this plunger here. Hmm. They did away with it on the 300 TDI. Now we don't know what that setting is, but I know I only just cracked that nut off. So hopefully, if we put this in the vise again, it should all move. Ooh. Boy, that's tight, eh? What the heck's going on here? Well, if it doesn't work here, it's not going to work on your car, is it? Is 
This calls for more investigation. I think it's that ball that's uh, I think it's the ball that's tight in the hole. Let me see if I can find a little drill and drill that out a bit. Get the dirt I think you see the problem now. It was here. This little shuttle valve, here, this little shuttle, um, it had become bruised over over the years going into reverse and the ball had been a hardened steel had hit this shaft which is kind of just mild steel and bruised it up and that's why it wasn't moving so hopefully now I'm going to clean out this uh, this housing and took all the dirt and debris out of it and let's try that again put some grease in Put the spring in. Oh no, that is the spring. Yeah, that was the other one. So we put that into there. That's a nice fit. Pop the ball in. Put the spring on. And then we'll put the cap on. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but this, the, the pin's sticking out a bit further. Grease. I've got more grease on my hands than in the bowl, in the tub. Well, I won't fasten this, down, this nut down quite yet. And let's see what it does in the vice now. Right, it's still, it's still tight. It's, it's working. I think it's my vice that's making that noise. Because that's working fine. It only has to move a bit. Yeah, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll bolt it on and find out. Now it has some, got some shims behind it, so if you take them off, don't lose them. There's two on this one. Tell you what, I'll go and get the gear shift. This has got the gator on because I couldn't get the knob off, but it's working fine. Look, so it's, it doesn't actually move. It moves on this side, so when you put it into reverse and up like that, it'll it'll go into gear. This is this is feeling great now. So I think we I think we've fixed that. So now tighten that screw down. I'm gonna tighten that nut down a bit. Now go. Next, we can put it onto the car. So, did we fix the leak? We, that's me, you and everybody. Yes. So, the leak inside is gone. Let's go and have a look, just to make sure. I'm a mess in here. I've got to get tidied up one of these days. Right, let's put some blinding light on. And there you go, there's nothing coming out of there at all. It's nice and... Uh, I've tried the shifter, the shifter's good. So I'm going to box this up, get some grease into... Uh, get some oil into the transfer case. And then, hopefully, we are done. Alright. <laughs>